handles. So here's the one that I finished last period. Um, really think about how you're gonna use these and how they're gonna function in everyday life, okay? The biggest thing is that your fingers are round, okay? So you don't want a handle to be completely straight sticking into your mug. It's not gonna be very comfortable to hold. You wanna have a nice curve at the top so that the curve of your finger fits into the curve of that handle. That's what makes that handle comfortable to hold. It is also nice to have an arc. Now I know some of you are doing sculptural handles and some of you are doing different things, but it's nice to have a little arc at the top. Um, just physics wise, it helps to hold the weight of the mug when you do have a little bit of an arch at the top, okay? And so this is what it should look like when it's cleaned up. So I pre-made some handles because you don't want to attach the handle right after you make it. So it's better, I, in my opinion, I think it's better to let it dry just a little bit before you attach it. Some people disagree, but there's a million ways to make handles, okay? Um, so I'm just gonna set this one aside for now so I don't, because I'm gonna use water, so I don't wanna get it all gross. But uh, So I have a cup, it's not a, hand, it's not a mug till it has a handle, okay? So I have a cup, I'm gonna demonstrate two different kinds. I'm gonna demonstrate the easy one, and then the one that's uh, more professional, but a little bit more challenging, okay? Um, so the easy way to do it is to take a slab, okay? And you can trim part of your slab away. So I actually like to use these smoothing tools and just put it over top. Um, the ones that you guys have are spray painted blue over there. Um, and you can actually just take your fettling knife and you can cut that. And it actually kind of makes it a little strip that goes just a little bit thick to thin, okay? And so now I'm gonna cut that just a little bit. Okay, and now the biggest thing is that you can't just bend a slab like this and attach it. Do you know why? Any guesses? It'll crack, right? So you have to compress your handle into the shape so that it doesn't warp or crack. And so to do that, you take this, and the first thing I like to do is just get a little bit of water. And we have uh, containers, by the way, under the sink over there. And I just take a little bit of water and smooth out the edges so that it's nice and clean. And then you can actually take just uh, one of these big yellow sponges and a rubber rib, and you just take the rubber rib and compress down against the handle and it'll curve right into that handle shape, okay? And so that's where you can get your cute little curved handle. Uh, my suggestion, and you can take the fettling knife and cut it like at a little bit of an angle downward so that it attaches to your cup a little bit better. So then let's say, um, let's say this was your cup. You could actually attach your handle there and there. And that would be a cute little handle, even like if you're doing like a one finger handle or something like that, that's an easy way to do it. Um, but it's not the most professional way. Okay, and so the most professional way is to do what's called a pulled handle, all right? And I know that this looks very awkward, <laughs> so you can giggle a little, it's okay. Uh, but pulled handles do look a little bit strange when you're doing them, and they do take a lot of practice. If you're gonna do a pulled handle, I suggest practicing a few. One, maybe like on Monday, take the whole class period and just practice pulling handles. But basically you wanna take a big lump of clay and hold it like this, and you wanna squeeze it into like a cow udder. It's like, it looks like an udder of a cow. That's really the only way I can describe it and you kind of spin it around in your hand or like a tornado or something. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna hold it over a container of water and you're actually gonna use the water to pull down that clay. And I told you, it looks awkward, I understand. You're gonna pull that clay as you spin it in your hand. So you're gonna spin it in your hand as you pull that clay down and you're gonna to start to pull it into that nice handle shape. And so once it gets to about this point, you sometimes I get a little like thick piece at the bottom, I just pinch that off so that it doesn't rip. And then once you get it about the length of your hand, then I start, cause you're gonna cut some of it off at the top and bottom. Now I'm gonna take my finger kind of like a sock puppet, okay? And I'm gonna start compressing into that square shape like this. So I'm gonna take water and start compressing and that's where I'm getting that nice curve, all right? And so then what I do is kind of like what I did with this board. Um, I cut them and I just leave them on the board. So I take my fettling knife and I cut it and then I let it sit in, an, in the curve shape because you want your pot, you want your handle to dry in that curve shape. Um, if it doesn't dry in the curve shape and you try to bend it and attach it to your mug, it will rebend in the kiln because if it dries at all in a shape that's not the shape that's on the mug, it will rebend to that shape because clay has a memory. So you wanna make sure that you keep it bent as it's drying a bit, all right? Now, when you actually attach it to your mug, so I have some that I pre-made last period, so they should be a little bit more dry, um, is I'm going to make sure my hands are really dry because I don't wanna get a bunch of fingerprints on my mug. And I wanna decide where that handle's gonna go. So I usually, for my signature, I always have a stamp and I usually put the um, handle right next to my signature. And so I'll just take this one here, and it's a little bit more dry than the one I did there earlier. Uh, but notice that there's like a weird angle, right? It doesn't fit very snug to the mug. You see how it's kind of like coming up? That looks really ugly. 
And so what I usually do is I lay the handle on its side and I'll do this in my hand so you can see. I lay it on the side and I actually take my fettling knife and I cut through at an angle a little bit. I don't usually do this in my hand. I usually do it on the table, but so that you guys can see. And then that way it's gonna fit a lot more snug up against the side of my pot. And so now I'm gonna take my handle, again, make sure my hands are dry, and I'm gonna set that. And now that connection looks a lot more snug, right? Like it fits a lot more smooth on the edge of that pot. And so now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna kind of size it and curve it just a little bit so that I know where it's gonna go. And you have to slip and score the handle. Slipping and scoring is very, very important for mugs. I have seen mugs that students made that they didn't slip and score it very well. And after glazing, they started using it with coffee and the handle actually broke off. So you have to slip and score it really well. And so what I did was I just took a, a fettling knife and made marks on both sides. So now I know where to slip and score. I have this fancy little scoring tool, but um, you guys have the tooth ribs. And I'm just gonna make my score marks on both of those parts. And then I am gonna score the handle also. Now, if you guys watch handle making YouTube videos and stuff, everybody does handles a little differently. This is the way that works for me. Um, but you can definitely obviously watch videos too. Um, and then I'm gonna take the scoring tool and score my handle. And then I'm gonna put slip. I'm gonna be very generous with the slip because you want it to kind of ooze out. So I actually use a toothbrush to apply my slip. Um, I thought about bringing in my old toothbrushes for you guys. But I thought you would think that's kind of gross. So I did not do that. All right, so that's about how much slip I put in the handle. I, I'm pretty generous with the slip. And then I take my mug and I just really compress the handle onto those score marks like that. So then what I do is I actually let this dry. And so what you guys could do is you could do this one class period and then let it dry in a bag overnight. And then the next day you could clean it up. So I actually let the slip ooze out and then tomorrow I'll clean it up. So then tomorrow I'll take, well, later today, if it was you guys, it would be tomorrow, but I would take wooden tools. You could take, you know, the small little wooden tools that we have and you can actually go through and you can clean up the slip. You can do this a little bit while it's still wet and kind of go around and clean up the slip, but you want the slip to ooze in to the handle and the mug so it makes a really strong connection. And then I, another suggestion I have, if you're able to, sometimes your handle sticks up a little too high and you can't flip it over on the table, but if you can flip it upside down, which it looks like I can, that's a better way to let it dry because then the handle won't slump. Because sometimes if your handle's really wet, if you set it like this, the handle can start to sink down a bit. So if you keep it upside down, then it'll retain the curve. But if your handle sticks over the height of the rim, you can always hang it off the edge of your table until the end of class. Just try not to bump it, okay? And then once your handle dries, then you can go in like what I did with this one and I cleaned it up. I actually uh, cleaned up with a wooden tool and then I used a wet to glaze brush to go around the connection and make it super smooth. You do want to do your handles when your mugs are completely like leather hard. Uh, why wouldn't you want to attach a handle to a wet mug or a wet cup? What could happen to the cup? Hmm? It will crack. But if you're adding weight to the side of a wet item, it'll pull on that side and it'll start to pull and distort the shape. So you want to make sure that your mug is leather hard. You want the handle to be like the last thing you do, okay, is attach the handle. So those are two different types of handles. Um, Okay, here's all my puns. I know you can handle it. It is a learning curve, but I'm pulling for you. Three and one, there you go. Any questions? Thanks for videoing, Ed. Ed